Today we are at the Rainbow Ridge Opal Mine. There's a couple different things you can do here. You can reserve a scoop for $900 and up to three of you can go through that scoop in a day or you can just go through the tailings for $100 a day. Uh, we're early, so we're waiting for the owners to show up and let us in. We're really excited about this and we hope it goes really well. So we'll get back to you on that real soon. Should probably mention we are in the middle of nowhere. So there's no service, no services, anything. So you got to get a lot of gas before you come in here. Bring your food, bring your water, bring everything that you're going to need to survive or you won't have it. This thing is huge. It's all in water. This thing is wild. We're in line here, ready to pay for our experience. Okay, so we're here at the Rainbow Ridge Opal Mine. These are the tailings. We're all doing tailings today. And uh, the, it's been raining a lot and hasn't really been open much, which means that the opals are just sparkling up at us. Look at the color on that. It's small, but it's beautiful. It's got rainbows you probably can't see on the camera too. All right, so we're just walking around. I'm walking towards the sun, so I have a better chance of the sun reflecting the glassy opal and shining up at me. And when I see that gorgeous glassy opal, I come down and look. And that's what we're doing today here at Rainbow Ridge. It's a whole lot of fun. Oh my gosh, look at that. Didn't even do that on purpose. What is that? Oh, it's gypsum, but it's still really pretty. Cool. You guys, there's literally royal opal all over the ground here. I mean, this rain has just made it so easy to find. Look at that. There's rainbows all around the edge of that. You can't hardly see them, but they're there. What a sweet piece. And you guys, I'm finding a lot of material. Like, look at this. Can you believe that? Look at it. I mean, it's huge. Most of it's mud, sure. But, like, look at all the big chunks of opal in there. And there's rainbows in that. And then there's this, which is just, like, bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Once this is cleaned up, it's going to be a really incredible piece. I mean, it's totally covered in mud now. But, like, look at how big for an opal. That's nuts. It's nuts. I love this place. I'm having such a great time, guys. Come on out to Rainbow Ridge. You can actually see the rainbows in this through the camera, even green and orange. It's a big piece, too, about the size of my thumb here. Right the end of my thumb. Everyone's talking about how excited they are and how they want to buy a scoop. I'm doing a lot of raking over there. I've only been doing surface collecting and it's been going great. So, you know, if you want to rake, rake. If you want to just look around, just look around. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover here. And with all the rain exposing everything, I think I'm just going to keep looking around. I don't really want to rake. I'm tired from doing too much of the Royal Peacock. Wow, so today was incredible. I spent the whole day just walking around, picking up opals off the ground. This is that kind of place. It was really great. Really happy with my experience here. And I can't wait to clean everything up and show you guys. Alright guys, so this is what I got at the Rainbow Ridge. Got a lot of petrified wood. I like the petrified wood at Rainbow Ridge. It's a little more solid. There's a lot more limb casts, which are pretty. You know, just pieces where it used to be wood. Um, and I feel like there's a lot more opal in there wood. Uh, here you can see the white parts. And then you, there's some more on that side. So it kind of goes all the way through that piece. Here you can see there's a nice vein going all the way through the thing. There was some uh, color flash on the side of that too. So that's cool. And those pieces have a lot of opal in them. These pieces, I'm not sure yet. They say leave them out in the sun. Maybe they'll develop some color. This is a piece of Botryoidal Rhyolite that I found. I thought that was pretty. This is my biggest piece of common opal. I think it's gorgeous. It's got all kinds of nice, you know, color to it. Unfortunately, there's no rainbows because it's common. So this is all the common opal pile. This is actually a pretty serious pile. There's a lot of really nice pieces in here. Tons of nice limb casts. Um, the common opals a lot of the time is white or orange. I got a little bit of clearish stuff. Um, I got one piece that's kind of black. And the reason it's common is because there's no rainbows in it. This is all opal, but I couldn't see any rainbows. Um, maybe 
you know, when this material starts to get worked or something like that, the rainbows will appear. Maybe when the opal dries out a little bit more, the rainbows will appear. So this is material I'm going to go over again in the future to make sure that um, it doesn't become royal, which would be really interesting. That's what people say happens. So I'm going to hope that happens. Uh, that's some selenite gypsum. Uh, it's more solid at the Rainbow Ridge. I like this stuff. It's kind of pretty. Not too wild. Uh, got a little bit of sand going on. I think that's fun to kind of process the sand. But uh, what we really come to Rainbow Ridge for in the Virgin Valley in general is this, the Royal Opal. I mean, wow. Look at all the color variation. And every single piece here has rainbows in it. We call that fire. So these all have fire. That one has a lot of fire. Look at that green flash. I mean, wow. When I saw that, I almost thought it was a piece of green plastic or something. It's so green. I love it. This one right here is all purple. I love, I, I, I love that the opal and also the rainbows come in different colors. There's another green one. I mean, just gorgeous. I mean, you get blues and you get purples in the rainbows. This one is red with red uh, rainbows, red flash, red fire. So yeah, I'd say it was a pretty freaking successful day over at uh, the, Royal, uh, the Rainbow Ridge Opal Mine. Um, definitely something I want to do again. Uh, I'm going to try and do it tomorrow, actually, if I can. Um, my friends had a lot of luck, too, when they were digging. I did almost entirely surface collecting because there was so much rain. I mean, look at that black opal. That's, that's what people come here for, really, is the black opal. Let me see that. And then once I get this wet, watch what happens. You can kind of see the color a little bit more. Maybe. I don't know. But it's in there. Really gorgeous black opal. Nice combination pieces with different colors. Nice huge one. That'll make a really, really nice finished piece. Uh, it's really solid, which is good. All this did come from the tailings, meaning that it's already dried out. When you take the opals out of the wall, they're considered wet and you want to keep them in water if they have rainbows so that they don't dry out. Um, all of these were already in the tailings, meaning they already came out of the wall and they already dried out in the tailings. So essentially they're already cured and I don't really have to worry about them cracking, so they're going to stay out of water. Look at that big old limb cast with just this nice big fat chunk of opal in it. Beautiful. Just fantastic. Okay. Almost forgot to show you guys two of my favorite pieces. This one's a clear limb cast. Really, really cool. And this one, I believe, is a is an opalized seed. That would be my guess. It's perfect teardrop shape, and it's totally smooth. How else would it form like that unless it's a fossil of something like a seed? I love it. So I'm back for another day of digging through the tailings. There's going to be a lot of people doing loads today with that big loader over there. They just drop it off and you pay 900 bucks for that giant scoop and you go through that. There's dogs all over the place here. It's going to be fun. One strategy I feel like is important to share is when you get to a place and there's a ton of ton of tailings like this, go to the furthest possible spot. Go where most people aren't going. And that's typically the dirt that's going to be less gone through. And that's where you're going to find better opals. So that's the one little technique. Thought I'd give you a pointer there. So I thought I'd start the Rainbow Ridge reveal part two with these beautiful water opals. So when they bring you the fresh scoop and you take an opal right out of the clay, it's considered a wet opal. A large part of the chemical formula of opal is water. If you take a opal out of that clay and you let it dry out, you risk damaging the opal um, when 
it dries out because the molecules come closer together and it can cause cracks and it can also cause a loss of color in an opal. An example of an opal that's lost a lot of color would be this one. This was in that older tailing pile in the back. You can see there's some black opal in the middle and the white opal on the outside. But you can also see that this is very cracked, very decayed, very weathered piece. Um, and you can also see there's not much color left. Um, there is some color in there, and there was probably used to be a lot more. So that's an example of, of wet opal versus dry opal. Mosquito, look, just killed a mosquito right there on camera. That sucks. Mosquitoes are just awful. There's so many of them here, to be honest. And the noceums aren't that much fun either. Uh, so there's wood. These are the petrified wood. We'll just get back to that, I guess. Um, nice little limb casts. The bugs are still eating me. Um, then we've got some common opal limb casts. Who knows, maybe if you grind into the side of that, we might find some better opal. But And then there's some that's kind of forming inside of the wood. This is my, like, opaly wood pile. And the bugs are still eating me. And this is a nice big limb cast. And then there's a little bit of opal on the outside of it. That's kind of pretty. Another piece of wood. Some nice opal on the outside of it. Who knows what's on the inside of these. Um, I've seen pieces that are cut in half. And they've got full rainbows all the way through them. So um, what they say is just let it dry out for like a year or two, I guess, so that maybe it'll develop some color. And if it does, then go ahead and cut it or just cut into it and find out. Um, that's their strategy on that. Got a ton of the common opal yesterday on day two at Rainbow Ridge. Some, you know, common opal limb casts, lots of those. Um, some of the common opal was really pretty, like that. Might have used to have had color in it, but I got this from a really old tailing pile in the in the back there, so a lot of it was really decayed. Here's another example of one that probably was really spectacular back in the day, but it's very dry and very cracked. It makes for a nice common opal, though. Um, anytime you're going to work opal, you have to stabilize it anyway, so the cracks don't, you know, make a huge difference. <clears throat> There's another cool wood specimen with beautiful opal on the outside of it. Gorgeous. Here's another piece of common opal that I thought was interesting. Oh, gosh. I don't know if you can see it. There's a tiny pink dot inside of this clear opal here. I don't know what that's there for, but it's pretty. And then there's the Virgin Valley Royal Opal. Uh, I don't know how much of the rainbows you can see, but every piece on this bag has at least a little bit of rainbow in it. This one is the super duper dark black one. Um, just so you guys understand, um, this is this doesn't look like a lot of material, right? But this stuff can go for $100 a gram, okay? Um, that makes this little black piece I just showed you worth hundreds of dollars. Um, Virgin Valley Opal is extremely sought after. They're not producing huge amounts of it, so it is a very precious gemstone. Um, if you want cheap opal, you could buy Ethiopian opal, but then you, you know, maybe there was child labor involved in that. So maybe, you know, spend money on opals instead of, you know, buying the cheap stuff because it's pretty. Um, so that's kind of why, you know, I'm in this. So I just wanted to mention that, um, we, we need to be responsible about where our gemstones come from, especially the expensive stuff. People put a lot of time and effort into getting this stuff. Um, we're, we're in the middle of nowhere guys to set up electricity. These power poles is it's, it's tens of thousands of dollars per power pole. I mean, it's it's not cheap to get set up out here. Plus, you have to have permits, e equipment, gasoline, and things like that. And that's why this ex is experience. The experience is expensive, and the material is expensive. Um, so that's just how that goes out here. Um, but it's better than, you know, buying into a system that hurts people or the planet in worse ways. 
They have to do environmental impact studies. They have to do all kinds of stuff to make sure that this stuff can come out of the ground safely. And that's that's why it's so important to buy the Virgin Valley Opal as opposed to the cheap opals from around the world. Um, there's a lot of really, you know, cheap stuff out there, and it's pretty, but it's not uh, ethically sourced. I put a lot of time and effort into coming out here. I got my, my vehicle. I'm paying for a campground. I have to feed myself. So, you know, I, I just feel like I have to explain it because I don't usually deal with expensive materials like this. I mean, I got some topaz, but this is more expensive than that even, and I almost feel bad charging so much, but the fact is, this is rare stuff, all right? I was out here for a week, and I got maybe, you know, 10, 12 ounces or something like that of Royal Opal, and, and a week's input out in the middle of nowhere is kind of a lot, so... Um, yeah, I'm not trying to oversell it, but I just want you guys to understand that, like, this is expensive because it's so hard to acquire. Um, this stuff is a lot less than what I found on the first day that I went. It wasn't all just laying on top of the ground. I had to rake this stuff out of the ground, uh, out of the tailing piles, uh, almost all of it. So, um, it's, it's not always going to be easy, easy pickings. And, and as the season goes on, it's, it's not even going to get better except for what's in the scoops and the fresh tailings that's coming out. Um, there was some cool stuff, though. In case you guys were wondering about those scoops, um, some of my buddies got one. And they got a log, like, bigger than their arm. Um, and if that does develop fire, it could be worth tens of thousands of dollars. They also got other opals that are, like, pretty large in size. And they put them in domes because they were water opals. Um, but those, again, could be worth thousands of dollars. Um, opal mining is a gamble, all right? I didn't do as well as they did, but I did better than some people did. Uh, a lot of people, honestly. Um, there's a lot of people that come out here, and they leave with no opal. They're upset because they thought, oh, I'm going to the Virgin Valley, I'm going to mine opals. You, you got to manage your expectations. Um Sometimes it's going to be really great. Sometimes it's not. It could be feast or famine, and it could be somewhere in between. So if you're ever going to come out to the Virgin Valley, that's something you need to be prepared for. Uh, maybe it's going to go really great. Maybe it's not. That's another part of why opals are expensive, because you don't know. When you put in all this input, are you going to get opal? These mines, they have to dig 40 feet of overburden with giant equipment just to get to this layer with the opals in it. And you, they, they hope there's opal there when they get there. It's, it's such a huge gamble mining opals out here. Um, there's people that come out and... I mean, my first three days, I only got like an ounce or less of opal. Of, of royal opal. I wasn't very happy with that. Um, and then I kind of got lucky at Rainbow Ridge getting there right when they opened because I was able to get a lot more off the top of the surface because of the erosion that had occurred. And these bugs are still eating me. So yeah, that's the Virgin Valley. Come check it out, guys. Um, I wasn't able to go to the Bonanza or the Cocopelli because they were closed. I wanted to. Um, I say go to as many different mines as you can, but end up at Rambo Ridge. So that's, that's this video here. Um, check out the Virgin Valley, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, make sure to check out loveandstonecreations.com for the links to the Instagram and the Facebook. There are some of our pendants are still on there. We're going to work on a video gallery for the website. That's really exciting. Um, so, yeah, you know, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for supporting me. If you want some opals, you know, <laughs> let me know. We'll see what we can do. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next adventure, and I hope you guys get out on a great adventure soon.